Hello, I'm Dean from Streamline and today I'm going to speak to you on the Streamline how-to video about the Streamline controllers. This is the V16 controller range. We have a couple in our range. We have the standard one, as you can see. This is the V16, which our part number is SFC16. It's the standard controller, the most popular one. Uh, we have the controller with the back entry. Not the, bot not the bottom entry. This is SFC16-B. And then we have the remote controller version. This one has the remote uh, to activate the controller, uh, activate the speed. This is our SFC09 controller. The SFC16 controller range come with four wires, colored for your easy installation. The red and the black are your positive and negative, and they connect to the positive and negative of the battery. The brown and the blue connect to your red and black on the pump, on the stream, on the shore flow or stream flow pump that you're using. The brown goes to the red, and the blue wire goes to the black wire. Each controller has a fuse and a fuse holder come included in the kit when you buy it. Make sure you fit this to protect your controller and protect your pump, protect your system. The SC9 is the remote controller version. It has an additional length of wire to easy connect into your system. These are easy to attach by the quick release fittings on the end of the wire supplied. You also have a antenna here, which is screwed onto the bottom of the controller. So you just remove this red cap, screw the antenna on. It is magnetic, so you can fit to the side of your vehicle, or if you've got a poly code or a apply lining kit on your van, then you can actually put this towards the back door on any metal work in the vehicle. Uh, some people uh, put it on the side of the, the smart tank cabinet or on, on the side of the frame of the system. And this is your, your wireless switch. This uh, lanyard goes around your neck, around the operator's neck. You can turn on, turn off, increase the speed, have a boost mode set up. Uh, this can all be changed by the operator. It is rechargeable. You can recharge this with a USB port. Uh, so in the car, when you're driving from next job to next job, you can, you can make sure this is fully topped up whilst driving. Okay, so some of you are asking how to use this controller. It's very, very simple, very easy. So if you have a look here, this is one of our V16 controllers with the rear back entry mounted on a Streamflow trolley system. These, these controllers are used on the majority of our systems, majority of our trolleys. The function is very simple. You have three buttons, and then you have your power on and off button. This power on and off button here simply turns the controller on and off. If you turn the controller on, it normally comes up with a message FLO, which means the flow rate. As you can see, currently it's set at zero, meaning there's no flow pump's not operating, there's no water coming out to the operator. The two buttons here, the up and the down arrow, are just the flow rate of the pump. So if we increase, you can see the numbers start to rise, and this is the percentage of the pump running speed. You can also hear the, motor, the, the pump kick in and the pump is working faster as the numbers increase. So most people run at between 40 and 50 on the controller. This gives the operator approximately two liters per minute of water. This is enough to clean, a, have a good clean on, on, on the glass, but also to save water. You don't want too much water on the glass. You don't want to be wasting water, uh, but you can increase if you have a, a very dirty window or you need more water to rinse, or simply you have four jets or a rinse bar on your brush and you just need that extra amount of water to have a good flow. So you can reduce the, the pump speed down to zero and then continue on, move around the building to the next window or shut the doors and move on to the next job. Or you can just simply turn the pump off. There are other features on the controller. So if you turn the controller on and you use the return arrow on the right to toggle between the features, 
So as we've just seen, that's the flow rate, currently set at zero. We push to return, you see the BAT, that's the battery. So this is the battery voltage. So this is shown at 13.1. Of course, it's a 12 volt battery, so this is fully charged. Now this would also show me if the, if the battery is being charged. So if you have a battery or a charger which may be faulty and you wanted to test this, you can plug the charger in, you can plug the charger into the mains supply, connect the, the trolley or your, your system, or even on a vehicle when you've got a split charge relay and you turn your vehicle on to check that the batteries are being charged, this should jump up to about 13.8, 13.9 to show that there's an increase of power, increases of power supply going to the battery, meaning it's being charged. When you continue your day's work and you can check this throughout your day, you can see that the power does drop, goes down to 12.8, goes down to 12.5. You continually go down to about approximately 10.2, 10.1, when it will therefore start flashing BAT. This is a simple message to say that your battery is low it's below 11 volts. If the battery is too low, the pump will stop. And this is to protect the battery from going too low so it cannot be recharged. It will shut down and it will simply just flash BAT. This means that you need to connect your charger or turn the vehicle on if you've got a split charge relay on your system to, to uh, charge the, the battery as soon as possible. It is possible to use the system whilst being charged. So you can all bear that in mind. If it is flashing BAT, you can charge the system whilst you use it. There are some other messages which I can explain you about. Unfortunately, I can't show you here because the system's not in use, but you might, might see some other messages on the screen. Some include ERR, saying error. This is an error occurred, uh, which will happen when the motor is not connected or the pump is not connected, or the enter button has not been pressed to, to cancel it. Another one is PS. This means pressure switch. This is when the pressure, has, uh, the pressure switch on the pump has been activated and uh, the pump cannot press pump any further because it's reached 100 PSI. This simply means that either there's a, a stop on the end or uh, the water cannot get through, so there might be an airlock. Um, it's very similar to another message on here as DE. This is a dead end. Uh, this, this means a dead end has been detected. So you can either uh, check the hose and make sure that the connection is, is correct, that there's the pole connected to the stop connector, um, or there's, there's uh, no airlock, or there's, there's no kink in the hose, just run your, your uh, make a visual check across all, all this. Um, and then there's another one, uh, CAL, C-A-L, which means calibration. Or zero C or O-C, this means overcurrent. Um, this means that the, uh, the, the controller obviously has shut the pump down to protect itself. So you can either lower the flow rate or check the hose for any blockages. Those three messages are very closely connected to each other. PS or P5, DE and zero or OC. So if you receive those uh, three messages, first thing to do is check that there's no stoppage on the hose, make sure there's no kink, make sure that the, there's water is connected, that, sorry, that the telescopic pole is connected to the, to the hose so there's a continual water flow making sure there's no univalve stopping or no tap stopping the water flow. Um, just make sure there's a continual, the, the pump can continually pump water through. Make sure there's no airlock, make sure there's, there's water in the tank, there's no airlock coming through, there, there is water being pumped through the pump and through the filter. Um, okay, so there were some uh, few tips and some interesting facts on the streamlining controllers, the SSC 16 range and the SC 16, which we use on most of our systems. If you have any further questions or any other concerns on, on your system, please don't hesitate to be in touch with our technical team. Thank you.